good. Uh, my name is Iola Columbus, and I'm the tribal president of the Lower Sioux Indian Community. Okay, then. We were installed as off in the office on June 24th of last year. I think I would like to comment a little bit about what is currently going on with our programs. In, in, uh, this is my office right here. I have filing cabinets and my telephone and everything is in this room and uh, our building, our tribal office should be complete in about three or four weeks and uh, we will be, uh, at, when our funding comes in, we will be able to hire a business administrator the clerk typist, receptionist, and all our staff, which will be of uh, a lot of assistance to me because right now I do most of my own paperwork and I have a person that comes in who's a bookkeeper consultant or, you know, clerk typist that does a lot of my work, and um, which will give me more time to get out and get out to go to some of the meetings that the tribal presidents are required to attend. As it is, I do attend a lot of meetings. I've been to Washington, D.C. on various occasions to uh, in seeking funding for this community. And uh, I'm kind of proud of the fact that our community has made a lot of progress within the last five or six years. And by the way, um, I'm the first woman tribal president since the first um, the bylaws was made up in back in 1934 so that's over a period of uh, 40 years and uh, maybe I should comment a little bit about that also because uh, you know in my speeches to different organizations meetings and um, women's uh, clubs and uh, so forth. Uh, I've been asked to talk about, you know, how is it to be a tribal president, you know, woman president, and what's the feelings of the community? And uh, I really don't think there's that much difference. Uh, the men, I probably, the reason for this is that most of the men have to go away from the reservation here to work, and they just don't have the time to serve on these committees and on uh, on the council, which they have in the past, but now uh, things are being are more complex. We have the self determination. We also have a recent decision that was made by the Supreme Court and the Bryan decision, where there are a lot of ramifications. There are a lot of things that uh, take up a lot of time, and a man just can't. Uh, um, accept this position unless, you know, with our funding that's coming in now, we will be able to pay our tribal councils. By the way, our council that ha does not uh, receive any kind of salary. We are, it is mostly on volunteer basis. And uh, now with this, these different fundings coming in, uh, we can pay our council members per diem mileage to attend meetings, and things are looking much better than they did a few years ago. And I'm also a housekeeper, which I find very little time to spend <laughs> in cooking, you know, as uh, my wifely duties. But uh, I do, however, you know, find time to cook a good hot meal once in a while. But my daughters are a lot of help to me. One of them lives, lives down the road a ways, who cleans the house, comes over and cooks, and when I'm away on a two, three day meeting, I said, they just uh, take over here, you know, and uh, I do have three children who are still in school. But uh, at first it was hard for my family to accept the fact that I, you know, had, was gone a lot, and 
in some cases I said, you know, it's just like getting acquainted with my family again. But now they more or less realize that my position and that I have to attend these meetings. And in some ways, I think they're proud of the fact that, you know, I've uh, been able to meet some very important people, the dignitaries, and um, I have pictures here, and my children are very proud of those pictures. They like to show it to friends, and now and then I said, uh, we're, you know, we run articles in a paper about uh, what's going on in our community, and uh, I, I, truthfully, I do you know, I like my work now that I understand it. And to me, working for the people in a reservation or as a tribal leader, you can see the results of your hard work, and it is very rewarding to me as a person that I'm able to do these things, not only for one person, but for a whole tribe. There. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, a zero count, and you do that same thing again. Okay. All right. Um, leave it on, Jim. Well. Okay. I'm looking over our current uh, our correspondence trying to decide which has to be approved, and we are see that we have some budgets to work on. Uh -huh. yeah. I'd like to have you meet my family. This, oh, Tammy, look away. This is my granddaughter, Tammy. This is my grandson, Wishbone. My grand, <laughs> my daughter, Melissa. Melissa is the youngest one out of my family. And uh, the rest of them are a little bit too bashful, but uh, <laughs> he's acting up a little bit. But uh, I <laughs> my grandson here, they live about a quarter of a mile away from here. And uh, they're here for the day. There goes the phone answer. Sorry for the interruption, but I had a telephone call from 
our attorney from the Native Americans Right Rights Fund in Colorado, and uh, Charles Loha, who is our attorney, is uh, helping us with our revision of the Constitution and bylaws. And this coming Friday, which is tomorrow, we'll be having our one of our final bylaw committee meetings, and uh, we'll compile all of the, this information. And uh, I will be taking this to uh, to Boulder, Colorado, where NARF has their office. And what we hope to do is discuss this. Plus, I have some concerns about uh, the recent Supreme Court decision on this Bryan case, uh, which involves a uh, a lot of things. You know, there's a lot of ramifications there, and we might even have to make some changes now as far as regulating certain things and now we have to probably have to make uh, write up some ordinances to regulate certain things and um, that's one of our mm -hmm. right now okay. all right thank you uh, it seems like I've been uh, talking about only what I've been doing and about myself however there are five, four other council members, and uh, they are myself, who I'm, I'm the president, and the vice president is Pearl Blue, whom I'm sure you have met, and um, Secretary Marie Larson, Evelyn Prescott, who is our treasurer, and Assistant Secretary, who is uh, Leon Columbus. And, um, I feel that we've made a lot of progress in these past this past year, and that wouldn't have been possible if I had to do these things, you know, myself. And so I think they should, uh, somewhere along the line, that we should, I should uh, comment about that. And I really owe them a lot, you know, to as far as their support. We've had problems with. Uh, different things that have come up where there is misunderstandings and controversies but the women's books have stood by me all the way through and we've somehow come out on the top now where our programs are running smoothly and right now we will uh, we have a tribal office that will be moved on site in about a week and a half and that was possible through a HUD grant that we received. And uh, in that tribal building will house our offices and we'll also have a daycare program. And the basement we hope to use for recreational and social gatherings and this type of thing. And I can envision for the future, uh, and that's another thing too, we got another HUD grant where we uh, hired a consultant who, uh, after meet several meetings, we told our consultant just what we want for the next uh, five years. We had to plan for the next five years, and that will be put into book form. And this is our comprehensive plan. And in our comprehensive plan, we will be buying more land, and also we'll uh, we hope to have um, safety lighting, improve our roads, and have a recreational center, and possibly, who knows, even a museum. We are uh, waiting to be designated as a recipient of EDA funds, and if that comes through, then maybe that'll be possible, a museum, and I would like to have an educational center for our our young people where they can go and study. I'd like to have microscopes and a full library, encyclopedias where the students can go and study in quiet, you know, or whatever. And also maybe a, uh, a room where we can have sewing machines where the young girls can go and uh, make their own clothes. We hope to have an instructor to teach our young, young women how to sew in um, a culture center where we can hold some of our classes because we do have a program called Title IV-B 
and uh, that's all about our Dakota heritage. We'll be teaching our language and uh, arts and crafts, a little bit of maybe pottery, and everything that anything that has to do with Dakota heritage. And uh, I believe that's about all I have to say. No, your turn. They want. No, no, I don't. Um, you introduce it. Yes, this is my husband Tom. Oh, I'm gonna. <laughs> what am I gonna say? <laughs> oh, I can't see. He. Uh, he is, uh, my husband Tom has retired uh, due to a heart condition several years. He had to retire from work. But he is, uh, right now, occupies himself with, uh, you know, making uh, pipe stone pipes and uh, all kinds of little, you know, things just to keep himself busy. But before that, when he was working, he used to, he was a painter and a bricklayer, block layer, and this, uh, he did a lot of this kind of work. So, uh, okay. now, <clears throat> after that magnificent introduction, how about you sitting here? I can't hear. Sit over here. What? Because she's going to take Just for a minute. Gee, I ain't got my hair cool. Oh, that's right. Get out.
last winter at the uh, football game. So that's quite an honor in a way, you know, I think. So with that, I think, you know, uh, to get out and get out to go to some of the meetings that the tribal presidents are required to attend. As it is, I do attend a lot of meetings. I've been to Washington, D.C. on various occasions to uh, in seeking funding for this community. In, uh, I'm kind of proud of the fact that our community has made a lot of progress within the last five or six years. And by the way, um, I'm the first woman tribal president since the first, um, the bylaws was made up in back in 1934, so that's over a period of uh, 40 years. And my telephone and everything is in this room, and uh, our building, our tribal office should be complete in about three or four weeks and uh, we will be uh, when our funding comes in we will be able to hire a business administrator a clerk typist receptionist and all our staff which will be of, uh, a lot of assistance to me because right now I do most of my own paperwork and I have a person that comes in who's a bookkeeper consultant or, you know, clerk typist that does a lot of my work, and um, which will give me more time. And uh, maybe I should comment a little bit about that also because, uh, you know, in my speeches to different organizations, meetings, and um, women's uh, clubs, and uh, so forth. Uh, I've been asked to talk about, you know, how is it to be a tribal president, you know, woman president, and what's the feelings of the community? And uh, I really don't think there's that much difference. Uh, the men, I probably, the reason for this is that most of the men have to go away from the reservation here to work, and they just don't have the time to serve on these committees and on uh, on the council, which they have in the past, but now uh okay, good mm -hmm. yeah. uh, my name is Iola Columbus. And I'm the tribal president of the Lower Sioux Indian Community. Okay, then. We were installed as off in the office on June 24th of last year. I think I would like to comment a little bit about what is currently going on with our programs. In, in, uh, this is my office right here. I have filing cabinets. Uh, things are being are more complex. We have the self-determination. We also have a recent decision that was made by the Supreme Court and the Bryan decision where there are a lot of ramifications. There are a lot of things that uh, take up a lot of time and a man just can't uh, um, accept this position unless you know, with our funding that's coming in now, we will be able to pay our tribal councils. By the way, our council that does not uh, receive any kind of salary. We are, it is mostly on volunteer basis. And uh, now with this, these different fundings coming in, uh, we can 